put it together. That's going to be key. Then that's called assimilation. Then the last one is application. How do you apply that knowledge to solve a problem? That is going to be the key in the future. This is the, the kind of uh, prediction that we made. Of course, the new education policy or the national education policy also is in support of what I have said. What is that? There will be lots of flexibility in studies. A student can join a school, then continue the study, start going to industry, work for some time, come back and continue the study. This kind of flexibility is going to exist. Second, students can deposit their academic bank of credits. Credits, whatever they have achieved, they can put it to a kind of bank where you can encash as and when you want. Then multidisciplinary learning means apart from your field of study, you also need to know the related subjects. See whether there's a connection from one to the other. For example, if you study biology, biology, see whether the biological concepts or biological processes that you see can be incorporated in a design thinking process or a design concept. That's how the things are going to work. Next, holistic education becomes important. Holistic education means not only one set of education, the education must be multidimensional. Then getting career ready means the students while in the class, they need to have that skill sets to start functioning or start working from day one. Then the internship and projects are going to be more or less mandatory in every field of study. This is the kind of thing that we are going to see in the future. Next, careers. The careers, that the career paths, there will be multiple career paths because you are not only going to do a, a degree in design, you can also do a minor degree in something of your interest. For example, while doing a BDS program, you can also do a, a minor degree in computer science, a minor degree in music. All things are going to be connected in the future. That's what exactly has been predicted. Ultimately, everything boils down to simple mathematics and physics. There will be some physics and chemistry mathematics involved in everything that we're going to do in the future. Therefore, the, coming to the career path, how exactly you're going to get these skills and look for a career path. You can be a design professional or you can become a data scientist or you can become a design consultant for some of these things. This is the other thing. The one more thing that's going to happen in the future is that working in a single organization for long period of time is not going to happen, is not going to be there. That's what has been predicted. There will be multiple jobs being done simultaneously or over a career. These are the other the predictions we made. Careers are going to be plenty. You can walk into any of the uh, uh, fields or any of the companies or for the uh, applications and start working because design component is required everywhere. That's the other thing that's been made. Next, coming to program study. Program study, you're going to do a B design, a B -list program in the product design or gaming design or user experience design, interior design. There are plenty of opportunities. You can do a major in product design, a minor in something else is possible. Therefore, the program of study will be multiple options that are going to exist. You can decide what would be of your interest. As you move from first year to second year, second year to third year, the clarity starts evolving. At this point of time, you may not have absolute clarity with regard to the career path, absolute clarity with regard to the, the program of study. Possibly over a period of time, in the first to second year, it starts evolving because the first year is more or less common across all the, the design programs. The next thing is a university. Which university or which institute to study? You need to study an institute which has understood all these uh, futuristic situations, futuristic environments. Whichever university which can provide you that flexibility, 
which gives you the options of the national education policy is the university you need to focus consider joining last thing that i would suggest is you can make a prepare a list with regard to all this because which we normally call it as a, a conundrum conundrum means confusion there's lots of confusion to get the clarity with the a thought process one thing that you can do is you can start listing what exactly the program study you are your interest at this point on make a list 1 2 3 4 5 similarly look at the the institutions that you have in mind list all the institutions then you have about 100 to 150 choices then first 10 if you don't get look at the next 10 and uh, you can rest assured that there's tremendous opportunities that are going to exist i am extremely happy that dinan sagar university would provide you the kind of uh, the options that i have mentioned the the career paths multiple pathways thereby you can build your career in a way that you want because the flexibility is going to be the key the dinan sagar has understood the national education policy quite well it has implemented it to to a large extent thereby the students get a lot more flexibility than what we had what they had in the past with this few opening remarks i assure you the the remaining two speakers will focus more on design tell you what it is and by the end of this particular uh, session you will have absolute idea with regard to the design programs and the new is design careers thanks for responding to our invite and we are extremely happy to provide the information for you to make an informed choice i wish each one of you best of luck thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir i would now like to request professor mr arvind srinivas sir to please take over thank you sir uh, hope i am uh, audible yes sir okay sure so let me just i have a small presentation uh, which i thought uh, i would like to share uh, kindly confirm that uh, this is also visible yes sir it's visible oh, thank you yeah yeah i just to switch off the video for a better bandwidth with your permission for this day yes sir yes sir please go ahead sir yeah uh, thank you professor murthy uh, wonderful to hear you especially i liked uh, one particular triple e as what we used to call in engineering you know we used to call it as electrical electronics and uh, engineering and uh, you brought in a new parlance of uh, triple e enrollment for going on to employment and now going on to enterprise wonderful to hear you sir and in fact uh, i like the way you also talked about uh, applying and assimilating knowledge we initially started assimilating knowledge when we were all engineers but then now we have moved on to applying the knowledge which is exactly what uh, design thinking is all about and uh, i like the way you talked about the concept of a multidisciplinary major and minor so let's get a uh, little more deeper into each one of this as we go along so the first thing which i just thought uh, i should probably yeah uh, just to uh, you know for some of you who have just joined in late this is just the opening uh, uh, speaker professor murthy who is vice chancellor of dsu who have uh, just uh, given an extempore speech without any formal presentation uh, the third person on the screen which you see is me arvind trinivas uh, i'll be talking a little bit about uh, the concept of uh, design thinking why one should do design and what exactly is design and all that and then uh, mr dinesh kulkarni will take it further in terms of uh, few specific use cases uh, what we're going to be talking about so what exactly is uh, design thinking you know design thinking emerged as a particular approach for creatively solving problems way back when many of us were not in bog around the 1960s and it has nothing to do with the internet it is just that the internet enabled us for faster adoption and with the advent of the internet it became formally known as a uh, engineering design that's the way it typically happened and in fact this discipline gradually evolved over time while dealing with problems in day to day life and uh, it's become like based on human centered design like example if some of you are left handers you may remember very similar to the scissors which is always meant only for right handers because the world at that time was always right handed and for a few people like me who started off as left handers uh, we probably found it very difficult to use a left handed scissors and this concept gradually has moved on not just into scissors but also for wrist watch utensils gradual visual appeal and formally it has now established itself as a course of uh, design thinking as you can see on the screen 
what exactly is design thinking design thinking is primarily all about unraveling the secrets of the knots which you just see in the screen very similar to the analogy of problem solving in real life this is all design thinking is all about so what exactly are the concepts of design thinking as you can see in the screen uh, it's basically an iterative process it's a process for solving problems by prioritizing the consumer needs and above all it relies on observing with empathy with people how people interact with their environments and employs an iterative hands on approach in creative innovative solution so what are the broad elements of uh, design thinking the first one is human centered uh, if you do not understand the human being for whom the solution is being designed then uh, whatever you are trying to do will simply not work so it has to be human centered by keeping that uh, particular thing in mind and you need to create an open playful environment for fueling creativity for solving the human centered problems it allows you to frame the problem in a new way but look at it from different perspectives and consider a variety of solutions that's what uh, i call it as a creativity and the third element is iteration once you have come up with a solution for either a product or service whatever you think is then it's important to keep challenging yourself and reframing the problem and look at it from different perspectives test iterate repeatedly test and iterate and early rounds of testing and feedback helps you to ensure that you're delivering solutions to the people you love collaborative collaborative is a feature where you actually cooperate with people because a design engineer or engineering design bachelor of engineering design does not mean that you only simply ideate you will have to do a lot of collaboration with the other uh, types of different sort to different types of people as you can see people with the diverse perspectives work together and they will all be bounded by the glue called the bachelor of engineering design which is you and they create multidisciplinary teams that encourage different viewpoints and client co-creation and working in a flat hierarchy there is no concept of a hierarchy with a rigid boss and a subordinate and all that and that's what calls for collaborative thinking element and finally the fifth element of a typical design thinking is all about prototype you use a small prototype which can be used to communicate and test your data and also the solution whether it's a sample product or an idea drawn on paper or creating a tangible representation of their solution allows you to share and gather feedback before you actually make it into production ready things this is typically what are the different elements of uh, design thinking so let's just get into some examples of human centered thinking look at this screen for example this is a typical on the left hand side you see the ketchup bottle which is there but again uh, look at the current day heinz which actually comes through by having that uh, inverted uh, design bottle primarily why oh, why does it uh, happen that's because uh, this uh, inverted ketchup makes it easier for squeezing and people generally struggle a lot in fact the same thing happened with uh, earlier uh, toothpaste through but now of course you get many of them the squeezable types so this is typically is one example of uh, human centered thinking or when you try to understand uh, the people you are trying to reach and design them for their perspective not only will you arrive at unexpected answers but you will also come up with ideas that they will embrace i am sure you remember the tata group came with a car called zika uh, instead of the current day tiago as what you know zika was a zippy plus car but then there was a virus prevailing in brazil at that time called zika in 2016 and they dropped the name and difficulty of getting this full time ketchup bottle is exactly what you see on the screen right now or look at this other example a normal package which you see on the left hand side of the potato chips uh, which cannot be reused it makes a lot of noise while opening the uh, packet the product wastage is also high because it results in a lot of broken pieces and that's when you saw some of these on the right hand side the first pioneer they designed a small round package for easy access to the product stacked it neatly neatly into this and enabling the user finish in just two or three simple bites that was uh, this is a classic example of uh, human centered thinking and look at this example here which you see on the screen it's a small video clip which you will see here on the screen see how beautifully uh, this is on the tar park where the whole uh, assembly itself is uh, removable it just uh, folds over and uh, subsequently it even has a small shelter for the rain this is what you see here now is this design thinking yes this is how does this happen this happens on all the five elements you just can't collaborate the entire framework the steel frame the cloth uh, the iot solutions and all and that's where you need 
different kinds of multidisciplinary people to collaborate you know to empathize with the human being to say that this is what i need especially in like places like bangalore there is a lot of people parking cars and especially in the last couple of days with the rains hovering around thanks to uh, asani and things like that or probably look at this other simple example this is a door on the left hand side of the screen which you see it's just called push whereas look at this on the right hand side that's the small pull if you notice there is no handle for push why because you're going to push therefore there's no need to have a handle whereas if you don't use the word push or pull and just merely put the handle there is always a tendency for people to push when there's nothing given there and when you see the handle it's a human tendency to sort of pull it to your side this is a simple example but uh, very uh, it may sound very uh, obvious to many of you who have seen some of this but this is a typical classical example of what exactly is design thinking all about or look at this uh, multiple search in the microsoft uh, bing you must have seen the screen where you can see on the right hand side uh, the voice search the image search and the regular text search these are all things which are uh, uh, in fact the whole idea here is the humans perceive elements that appear to be similar as part of the unit that has the same function and uh, bing uses this law of similarity which is what uh, i just now referred to as you can see in the screen of course some of you may also be using google chrome but book from does not really come out with this kind of uh, thinking as you can see or even google search for example and i'll give you an example of some bad designs because it's always easy to appreciate good designs look at this for example the ship a small ship photo which i have taken it says no safety smoking first this is a completely anti thesis of the image which is supposed to convey if you see carefully observe it says no smoking in the same font color and safety first but unfortunately the way they have designed is such that it actually creates a lot of uh, misunderstanding saying that there is no safety in this ship and there is smoking first this is completely wrong and this is typically what uh, one should have done or look at this design of the t-shirt it says super shitters but actually if they had just made the s separately instead of the hitters especially in the baseball bat or probably the ipl which is going on they could design this much better but again these are days when design thinking was not given so much of thought and uh, this actually misled people and this actually conveyed a lot of humor and even caused several products to fail so what uh, exactly is the next element called being creative being creative you can see here on the left hand side of the screen a small wooden staircase where there is a lot of uh, drawers which are kept in for keeping some of the cd roms or other things which can kept in and it just goes in this is one uh, typical we are for trying to look at the creative things or look at this for example on the right hand side a small video where you can see on how entire uh, wardrobe is being made on the lower half of the screen uh, while the upper, upper half is for this this is for the shoe rack and the things like that these are simple things which does not require anything this idea and the creativity is what uh, designers do and then they actually collaborate with uh, carpenters engineers and other people to make sure and you own the entire solution end to end this is typically what designers do or look at this solution for example this is using a very simple distillery bottle using it as a small uh, uh, <clears throat> way for watering the plants this doesn't cost you anything and he's just using the standard hose pipe just fitted into one of the old bottles with some holes inside this doesn't call for any great thinking nor even uh, saying but to make this happen is if you believe you have a, a creativity like this then you should be doing this uh, course called uh, bachelor of design or look at this another example of easily lifting this stool i'm just going to pause for a minute you can see how simple the whole solution is clean up the solution move it back and then boom that's it these are some very simple stands which have got a small set of ball bearing wheels at the bottom for which you need some engineers to help you to design them or look at this for example in the mobile phone looking at this mini magnetic power bank because it's a very simple one it does not have to be one of those uh, big foldable I and mean, big carrying ones and all that it makes it quite simple and you probably never run out of power primarily because it's a very compact one in the helps you to uh, make uh, power banks much more easier while you're talking on the phone or if you are really having art uh, in, then look at this uh, beautiful piece of art which actually goes as if it's uh, perfectly fitting the pendulum as it oscillates at one throw with the going in between the various fingers without touching any of them this is a wonderful piece of art which is again part of uh, design thinking and uh, it of course calls for a lot more ideation and translation into a execution which calls for much more collaboration than uh, what probably i talked about again look at this uh, another example here a small handled double strainer 
which can help you to drain any drop of water without any pasta fruit or vegetables filling up it's a very simple one all with one single hand which can be done this is a very simple example of uh, design thinking or look at this example here on the left hand side you see a small uh, kit kat uh, bench and if you see the chocolate color is what the color of the bench is and it's by design kept with the word t half broken the kit kat so the people are able to realize that uh, this is what exactly we are talking about this is uh, all fitting very well into the surrounding or look at the right hand side watch the watch actually sounds very well when it goes into the surrounding where you can see as if the handle in which he is holding that uh, loop of the bus or the tram which he is using appears to be a watch and this is a very simple way of advertising uh, things which is all about uh, being creative iterations iterations are something which you have to keep doing repeatedly which uh, probably you have figured out by now i am not going to talk much on iterations but i just thought i should give you one example of one of my favorites which is this uh, fitbit the what you see here is on the fitbit which is uh, done the first version which came out in 2009 when we used to have it on the clip when it was tracking the basic activity and more like a clip to a t-shirt or a pant where 25000 units were sold and this is what you see on the screen and 2013 when the first watch based fit with which many features came through and now i think uh, this consistency of the model upgrades which fitbit started upon made it very very different from many other wearables and other technology products and kept them ahead of the curve and even today fitbit is at a slightly high premium compared to nvidia so this is a typical example of uh, what i call as uh, uh, <clears throat> being the creative and also doing it and iterative prototyping prototyping is something where you do a demonstration of a small thing try to see whether it works or not and if it doesn't work then probably go back to the drawing board and then uh, keep doing it uh, all over again this is another classical example of collaboration collaboration intentionally i have shown a dog there primarily the collaboration is somebody with uh, whom you may, who may not even understand you probably but how do you make them understand this so it's a process where two or more people or two or more entities or organizations work together to complete a task or achieve a goal it is similar to the cooperation most collaboration requires leadership where the design engineer will take the leadership although the form of leadership which i said earlier can be social it is not going to be a hierarchical structure it's going to be a flat structure where you work on this so this is typically how you try to collaborate with different entities and this is one of the key characteristics if you believe you have ability to come to consensus then you have in for the right design so ultimately as a professor murthy said follow your passion develop your passion for your program and study just follow your passion and just like the with the green light on passion is all that matters to you and nothing else matters so just to summarize of the five elements of design it's everywhere around us and right from the shoes which you wear or probably <clears throat> uh, many other things which you see around us but just to give you a quick idea in terms of uh, the five elements human centered design creativeness iterativeness collaborative nature and the prototyping and how all of this fused together to form into a simple things it is just because our brain was trained to make decisions on based on looks than on efficiency functionality we think it's all about so this is exactly all about uh, design thinking think about the times how many times you brought something just because it looked nice although you really didn't need it so to summarize again uh, let me just uh, go back again to talk about uh, the world of design being very vast enticing and full of color whether it is in humanities or sciences or bachelor's degree of design it gives you the ability to uh, realize your talent and potential capability and creative vision so just to conclude in terms of what professor murthy talked about earlier these are various types of engineering design which you will dig out as you get into the degree of uh, engineering design you could have product design which could probably be comprising for the games animation or others or communication design which can be graphics video or others like marketing flyers or the paper inserts which you see inside a paper many of them you can see are very poorly designed because it's done by some local guy for the industrial design where you have those huge fans and other places or even for example if some of you have seen when you come out of the airport uh, the first thing which you come in the duty free is the, f- the first half of the plane generally is all these uh, business class passengers so what they try to do is the business class passengers because they have to come out first the initial first two or three shops which you see in a airport when you come out are all those high expensive ones are meant to attract these uh, business shoppers because they probably can fly business class paying four five times 
and as keep growing further then you will see probably items getting most for the economic class and all that so that's exactly one example of interior space design or probably if you go to any of the shops like proma you may see many of the shops like your uh, fast moving items on the ground floor and probably one of those i call them as the graves in the first floor where you probably see those uh, uh refrigerators washing machines and all that because they don't move so fast compared to the fast moving items like the mobiles or the laptops and things like that user experience design that's something which has become a very specialized area with the master's degree also of it and of course there are other areas like uh, fashion design jewelry design and many of them on the line so with this i just wanted to conclude and uh, thank you all for the patient listening and uh, over to you shindi yeah thank you so much sir and it was a wonderful insight and i would now like to invite mr dinesh kulkarni to take over to preside and to give the students the industry perspective on the uh, careers in new age design over to you mr kulkarni thank you uh, shrinivas uh, good evening panelists and it was a wonderful insightful professor arvind and uh, dr murthy's uh, talk so far so going forward i'm going to specifics of um, what this design is all about um so to begin with whether you liked it or not you have chosen uh, design as your career okay so we categorize people in two ways okay generally drivers and driven okay drivers are the one uh, who create the worlds who create the destiny who are visionaries who are problem solvers okay who see opportunity okay and driven are the set of people uh, who would like to follow instructions okay so if you give a set of instruction this is how we have to do they would do wonderfully well okay so in india the state of affairs is like we are all uh, if you look at our industry it industry it's a service industry so we do the driven jobs like uh, um we have huge potential of human resources cheap labor so we are very good service providers not product ideators okay so when it comes to that's why the first point i made was the free thinking first you should not have any fear you are like a god okay you create a wonderful world and you create you put all the elements that is required uh, to make this world functional okay that's what a designer is all about okay so first and foremost for any designer is the free thinking you should not have any fear okay so when you if your god uh, sounds fearful then what kind of world he can create okay it would be a very fearful world or insecure world okay so it is very important because you have chosen a career uh, or the next 30 40 years of productive life um, into a area which requires critical thinking ideation skills okay so it is very important for you to uh, what you call uh, get the right ingredients in okay the basic uh, ingredients have to be right for making your career successful okay so as i said i am an animation visual effects producer so i specialize in ip what we call it as intellectual property okay so it was a very painful first uh, first decade of my career was very very painful because in india um, we are good as i said earlier we are good when we do what we are told okay we are very good at and efficient at that but when it comes to independent thinking we critically lack and the same is reflected in our industry if you look at um, any of our shows kaun banega karodpati or for that matter indian idol everything is copied okay everything is pirated okay who wants to be millionaire kaun banega karodpati okay uh, america has got talent india has talent uh, american idol indian idol so pretty much any program that you get to see okay is a rip off of some hollywood or a korean or a japanese flick okay so it has its own limitation when you because there is a ideator called apple okay who brings great products and you have a uh, great copy master called samsung which, which follows whatever wherever the uh, apple is leading in terms of products so it's very important for us how you want to position yourself okay so either so for that you have to have that basic ingredients right okay 
when we say basic ingredients right uh, we are talking about um, when it comes to animation i say the three pillars storytelling design technology okay you are when you design a product for animation all these three ingredients have to be keenly looked into and you should have adequate skilling in these three areas okay when it comes to uh, storytelling the storytelling has been there for last 10000 20000 years okay that's what has um, defined how the humans um, are cut out from the rest of the species how we in spite we are not the tallest we are not the um, strongest we are not the fastest whatever we are. other animals do spectacularly well we cannot even uh, weave the way the uh, weaver bird weaves its nest okay or a peacock can give a flourish of colors okay so in spite of all that we are on the top of the food chain just because of the enormous power of storytelling we have we can consolidate our knowledge okay in terms of uh, say your um, epics when you look at we consolidate that knowledge whatever uh, 100 years of existence into few uh, words and that would be very insightful for the subsequent generations that's how when you want to put your abstract uh, thought process in form of a story okay it becomes a very powerful medium okay so first when you if you want to be an uh, animation or a visual effects or a film making or for that matter gaming designer you need to have powerful storytelling this is the first tenet okay to be successful okay now when it comes to storytelling it has been there for last 5000 years so it was earlier oral then the uh, the text part of it the written part of it came and then uh, you can see the infusion of technology called printing process okay the moment it the printing process came you did not have a source okay to convey orally so that's how the technology makes a dif uh, difference in terms of dissemination okay so if there is a king and if there is a, uh, a tan king like akbar and the tans in the court okay you he is the it's the kind of personal entertainment he can have the tans and sings and uh, akbar uh, is able to enjoy that along with it some few courtiers but if you infuse a technology called gramophone which can record then there is no need for the source okay then if i take that gramophone recording and play it on a radio broadcast okay the broadcast to radio whosoever has that receiver okay is able to enjoy that same uh, music okay so that's where the technology makes a huge difference most of the time people mistake technology for original storytelling just because you are technically very good with all the software and all that uh, gizmos you feel that you have a you have mastered the art no you should first fundamentally use the storytelling the second is the design for towards those mediums okay when we say i have to design for um, say a medium called film making okay it is a very large landscape 70 feet to 100 feet that's the kind of imax screens we have so that's the kind of world we have believable world we have to create okay in that you have you infuse all the characters uh, the kind of conflicts that makes it entertaining where you put some 500000 people in a um, very uh, close to confine and that's how they enjoy the movie okay so it is very important if a storytelling is not powerful people will get bored okay so the so the design has to really cater to the requirement of the story and to the requirement of the technology so if you say a 500000 years before the things were all very personal by nature okay now you can see uh, from the personal you can see the transformation happening to the uh, mass entertainment that's what has happened in last 100 200 years personal entertainment has gone into mass entertainment space and again if you look at it, it has come back to the personal entertainment space how with the inception of technology is called augmented reality and virtual reality actually in the virtual reality you get inside the screen okay the immersive experience is so great that you get inside the screen okay and you experience that digital world so it is very important for us to understand these nuances very clearly how the uh, world is uh, facing in terms of uh, earlier any technology would be there for uh, a decade or two so from a silent era movie to a um, toki it might have been some 20 30 years okay so um, you have you would have charlie chaplin uh, who became a superstar in terms of silent movie 
and by the time the talk came he was not comfortable so he left he retired that's how it is so few movies he made talkie and he retired so 30 years was there okay from black and white to color it was another 60 years but if you look at current trends every 6 months a new technology is coming in okay are we there to really tell uh, stories to those uh, current narrative in terms of technology okay now we have augmented reality and virtual reality do we have film makers who are able to cater to those requirement so that's a big question mark that that's that's what is going to happen with your generation okay your generation would be making movies okay would be making gaming products in terms of catering to the requirement of personal entertainment space that's how the whole uh, world is moving and next 10 or 20 or 30 or years okay you can see this all coming into uh, picture so again as my previous speakers referred okay it is very important that what jobs my grandfather did are not there what my father did those jobs are not available now and by the time you pass out in next 5 years to 7 years or whatever however you want to do okay so you should be able to not only um, pick up the skills and you what is currently trending you should be in a very ideal position to pick up the other skills that is going to be there in the horizon okay now augmented reality and virtual reality are there in front of but in another 3 3 to 5 years or 10 years that would be a um, in thing so it is very important for you to gear up to those requirements okay now we need to just i'll go through the what are the current trends like what are the current job roles then we will look into uh, what would be uh, future job roles and how the world is shaping up are you able to see my screen yes yes visible okay great now what we what do we mean by why we have to have this kind of design what is the vision and the mission behind that every other company today should be media savvy okay so the transition has happened from brick and mortar to digital from digital to interaction space we are moving so earlier uh, Uh, how the businesses used to function a decade back okay there is a phenomenal transformation if you look at all the unicorns today or uh, decacrons today okay they are not there so be it amazon or uh, uber or any of this that you get to see they are not there okay so they are making phenomenal uh, difference in the way we live okay so when we talk about Uh, uh designing a program or how we look at it we need people to be media i mean students to be media literate media capable media savvy they should be able to produce create manage media for 21st century in all its forms okay so and also create con, uh, fun playful and engaging media okay these are the broad sectors as far as digital media is concerned animation visual effects gaming and ott um and social media large screen and digital advertisement and print and audio so these are the broad area so if you have to learn swimming you should first know the depth of the pool that's how you should understand the sector whichever sector you are choosing okay in terms of uh, uh, be it manufacturing or service sectors or any of the sectors you would like to choose. you should understand how the business dynamics or what is the valuation uh, so that you can really make a um, conscious decision okay uh, in terms of shaping up your career if you look at animation visual effects gaming and film making all this is a 45 billion dollar industry okay it's not a um, uh, it's one of the most uh, impactful industry if you just uh, uh, move away from bangalore or wherever whichever city you are and drive 50 kilometers away invariably you will be finding people uh, engaged in agriculture activity okay more than 50 to 70% of uh, people are engaged in agriculture activity. okay so what connects the richest of rich ambani to the poor, poorest of poor okay is entertainment entertainment and entertainment okay at the end of the hard days work they want to be entertained 
okay that's where we can create products okay we can design products in animation visual effects gaming and, and large screen format and you can see millions of ads that are coming out in both social media and in uh, television okay so how do i make, go about all this okay first fundamental thing you need to understand idea idea can be launched in different platforms okay so a idea or a story can be told in 10 or 20 seconds that's what we call as persuasive storytelling so i persuade you to buy my product i persuade you to buy my product in 10 or 20 seconds okay what is the insight in it okay that's what an ad you are bombarded with so many advertisements some advertisements are there all the time you this part of your dna when i say washing powder something that comes to mind immediately would be nirma do you might not use nirma as a product but you will remember the uh, quick connection between washing powder nirma watch and titan okay because you are so much used to that, uh, that it is part of your ingrained in your dna because you are bombarded with that kind of jingle okay that has connected emotionally connected with you so when millions of ads are made some ads you like some ads you don't like the insight here is the ads you like would be those ads which kind of creates impact on you like sadness contempt surprise disgust fear happiness if these are there as a part of the uh, your ad then there is impactful otherwise it would remain neutral and you will ignore so next time when you from now on you have to be very very uh, observant okay there you have seen lot of things there is a huge difference between seeing and observing okay seeing is what you do most of time when you travel a lot of things uh, pass around you you are not even aware but what makes it the uh, observation would be a thought okay today when i am traveling i would like to see how many people have preference for white cars or how many pre people prefer black cars so when you have this thought and when you start moving from point a to point b then that's what happens as observation so it is very critical that as a designer you should be inquisitive like a child okay three month old four month old child you can see how inquisitive it is it just wants to really explore the world understand how the world functions okay and it would be very very curious and that curious leads to curiosity leads to observation then that observation the work we call as the analyze and we detect what is right or wrong okay what these child like quality should always be there to be a successful designer okay now what is the insight in terms of uh, tomorrow you want to make an ad somebody gives you 50 lakhs and say okay go go ahead and create a couple of creatives for us in terms of 10 or 20 seconds of output how do we go about the insight here is if you know the principles like athos pathos and logos okay what is athos authentic person okay moment i put a aishwarya rai or amita bachchan uh, people notice this uh, sit up and notice oh okay what uh, what are these guys up to these people are very popular these people are very authentic she she is the most beautiful woman or he is the most uh, um, commanding man or whatever it is like so immediately people look up okay if an ad has this kind of ingredient called athos authority person and a pathos pathos is a some emotional connect or emotional need everyone has an emotional need okay that's how they connect so people are fond of their faces okay so if the camera is able to really capture the that beautiful face that's how a sonam kapoor will come a hrithik roshan will come and when he takes a selfie and he says look how handsome i am or how beautiful i look if a sonam kapoor says when you you will also have that emotional connect oh if i buy this popo go for topo camera uh, i mean mobile that camera will produce a imagery that will make me look like this kind of hrithik roshan or something like that so that's where you have that kind of emotional connect called pathos then of course the logos the logical part of 90% of the people okay population are emotional by nature they buy based on the emotional need they, there is nothing logical in it okay but 10% like lawyers or bankers or uh, doctors they are very logical they are not emotional people they are very logical so you will find plenty of logical details being being given like it has a um, super amoled screen uh, it has a snapdragon processor it has a uh, 256 gb memory blah 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 so many 
uh, uh, logical constraints are bombarded in it, elements are bombarded. When we combine all these three elements, that's how a advertisement or an ad becomes a super duper hit. Like if, if you, okay, when you analyze this, okay, if these three ingredients are there in right, uh, uh, like a, um, a dish, if these ingredients are there in uh, the right proportions, then along with the sound, okay, somewhere we forget about the sound design. If it, if all these ingredients are brought together, that makes a great ad. So like that, when you talk about animation visual effects, you should be very clear uh, what is the difference between an animation visual effects vis-a-vis -vis with a live action. So we have to be very clear in that in terms of insight. But when you get a story, whether it is uh, fit for animation or a visual effects or for a live action is dependent on the simple factor called what is not possible in live action, I do it in animation. Okay, I cannot make a cat and a mice to act in live action because it is simply not possible. So I require a medium to tell such stories. Or if I have to uh, make a movie like Interstellar or a Star Wars or something like mm, uh, a out of world avatar kind of movies, we require a medium, a world. That's where the visual effects come in. Okay, where we can create digital characters and digital words to uh, tell such stories. So it's very important for us to understand that what is not possible in live action, we do it in animation. Okay, if it is possible in live action, no, uh, how much soever technology I bring in, I cannot replicate a Amir Khan's acting or Amitabh Bachchan's acting. The kind of in the face alone, there are 300 muscles. The kind of emotions they can bring it on the screen is not possible digital. So it is very important for us when we design products for, for different mediums. These insights will be very helpful. And when it com comes to gaming. That's what we call it as interactive storytelling. In all the other mediums, we have what we call it as a very passive outlook. So somebody decides on your behalf how you need to be entertained. Okay, the director, his vision is what you get to see in a movie. Okay, or in a television serial or whatever. Okay, these are passive mediums. Audience are passive. Okay, now when you talk about gaming, it's what we call it as interactive storytelling, where you decide how you want to go, how you want to play the game. If I take a left option, these are the 10 problems I face if I take the left direction. If I take a right direction, these are the problems I face. If I move forward, these are the 10 problems I face. So it's very important for, and the whole story world is 360 degrees, okay? So you have to design for entire 360 degrees, whereas for other mediums, wherever the camera point of view is there, there you need to do that and design. Rest of it you need not worry, but when it comes to gaming, it has to be, the design has to be an entirety of all three strategies we need to look at. So it's very important for us to understand these nuances. When it comes to large screen, well, it's very important without visual effects today, you will not watch many a content in the big screen, just for the fact that VFX okay, plays a major role in creating that kind of world. Okay, Avatar or for that matter, any of the uh, Bahubali or any of this, if you try to watch in a, um, your mobile or on a television, you will not be able to appreciate it. That, that grandeur can only be appreciated in the big screen, a lot of the rings of that. And if you see any of these movies, okay, without visual effects, it is not possible. So it is very important for us to understand those mediums, okay, and uh, forge your career accordingly, okay. So as I said, this is how the $45 billion industry is. Today, you can see television is playing, playing a dominant role. Take, for example, OTT platforms. You can see a transition happening there. Earlier, say 20 years before, we had only one channel called Doodarshan. From there, we have profusion of channels, 836 channels to 1,000 channels we are having, okay, with fiction and non-fiction content. Okay? Even uh, non-fiction content news channels, like Arnab Goswami's uh, Republic, has become a kind of dramatic channel. Okay? So he brings a lot of drama, uh, apathy, you name it, all the emotion, right ingredients, he brings it to make it very interesting. So uh, even your dull uh, news channel might look very um, uh, vibrant the way the theoretics he does. Okay, so it's very important that television, you can see a gradual transitioning happening there. Earlier, you can see in urban areas, uh, especially in middle class and upper middle class, slowly the cable, are, cable is going out. Your Dish TV, your Tata Sky, everything is going out. Okay, and you have this Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Hotstar, all these are coming in. Okay, 
so it is on demand content you don't viewer don't doesn't have to wait for the content to happen okay so uh, he can if he's sad i says okay i i would like to see some comedy movies okay alexa uh, fetch me uh, english comedy movies immediately it fetches these are the uh, movies available and you just pick, pick it up so it is what we call as on demand content earlier it was a kind of a cartel when we are making movies some 30 years 20 30, 25 years before when i went to pitch for a, a story idea or a script then i had to have a strong industry backing someone some mentor has to be there for me to really uh, crack that but today with the profusion of channels like ott platforms okay they are acute lack of uh, this thing content is there and they are desperate for content if you are even having um, an iota of um, promise you you have your uh, ideas should be heard okay and you can be a good movie ma- film maker okay so it is very important that this democratization of content has happened with ott platforms profusion of ott platforms so everyone gets equal opportunity now and slowly you can see the print medium okay that print part of it will shrink now it is having some 21% and slowly the print will shrink and it will be taken over by gamification process to tomorrow today game is used as a form of entertainment okay, right now i am talking to you some 256 crore people are playing a game okay out of a, globally some 750 crore population 250 crore uh, 256 crore people are playing a game okay or for that matter 23 million people or some 2.3 crore people are watching a uh content in the last screen in the cinema theater okay so if i even conservatively take a multiplex okay may, maybe a pvr or inox or anything five screens would be there okay in that five screens every day five shows happen like that we have 2000 multiplex across some uh, uh, 50 to 80 uh, cities in india that alone constitutes some 10000 screens daily five shows means 55000 shows okay 55000 shows and the kind of with each screen some 200 to 300 people are sitting and watching the content okay any uh, movie uh, like salman khan or any of these movies that is getting placed over a period of two days one or two days it is fetching 100 crore revenue okay so no other no other business has this kind of uh, remarkable roi okay where you invest 50 crores and you release a movie after 6 months and you are making 1500 crores like bahubali or for that matter if you look at movies like avatar 300 million dollars got invested for a movie and they made 1.5 billion dollars okay for tatas and birlas it took 100 odd years to reach those kind of uh, numbers and here you make a movie and you are a billionaire uh, so it's very important for us that this is a very 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 serious business you have to understand which of sector you take up you understand the business nuances of it okay then you want to shape up your career where you want to be okay so let us look at the possible career opportunities if i take animation as a uh, vertical or animation as a sector okay these are the possible visualizers storyboard artists 2d animators 3d animators you have concept artists character artists you have uh, you have the whole a um, uh, plethora of opportunities in this but broadly i can ca- categorize into two three areas one is the yeah second is the production part of it okay producers area third is the technical part of it the technical directors involved in setting up the pipelines okay so it is up to you which uh, you want to select and how you want to go but if you want to become a director of a uh, uh, director for a uh, commercial movie you need to have 23 arts you need to know 23 arts of film right from the makeup to uh, dance choreography to uh, uh, canning the action shots uh, to cinematography to lighting to you name it you have to go through a plethora of you know, this thing now you have to pick up okay so it is very important for us to set those expectations right okay now when it comes to film making well you see it's all visible by nature uh, this is a sector which is very highly visible okay so you at least watch a movie once or twice in a month okay so how does the uh, revenue works out this is how if you if i take the last in 2020 few movies were released before the pandemic so if i look at the kind of returns okay this is what you have to look at and from a producer's perspective how it is fetching okay and these are the top uh, film distribution companies globally and in india 
and if you look at even uh, movies like tanaji and all that okay it is grossing the overseas market is one of earlier it was a very small market but the indians are spread across the globe so now overseas market this has become a kind of a very important market for us so you can see the kind of grossing happening there so again the ott within a year or two during the pandemic itself it has grown 300% sorry uh, 30% in terms of compounded annual growth so understand the business part of it okay it helps you tremendously to and again the these are the career opportunities as far as film making is concerned then we get into the gaming okay that's what we we address the interaction design part of it okay these are the genre be it casual puzzle arcade games racing strategy card board games adventure world games simulation this how the uh, segment in terms of video um, game genres are and this is the market size okay if you look at europe alone 32.9 billion dollar market okay whatever game you produce okay if it is appealing you have a 32.9 billion european market or asia pacific market india china all this of asian countries put together 84.3 billion market or for that matter north america us and canada and all the countries alone there you have 44.7 billion dollar market so it's very important for us to understand how the this business functions these are the top 100 countries that produce the uh, gaming content in that we are there down below you can see we are in the 16th position even taiwan australia brazil are much ahead of us in spite of producing millions of software engineers okay <laughs> like uh, dr narayan murthy said there is no uh, we have we produce millions of engineering uh, engineering graduates but not even a single engineering product in last 8 years that's the bane of it so here we can see because of lack of focus in the academics on the uh, in the area of interaction design especially in the uh, uh, field of gaming okay we are lagging somewhere around 16 even though we have a considerable population okay consumers okay we have 136 crore population or of its 50 to 80 crore uh, people are actively involved in and playing games uh, we don't have much of indian products okay so that's where we are in the 16 position so uh, we have to have a very focused approach to be there on the top okay like how we have been dominating the service sector of software market we can also dominate here these are the top gaming companies in the world okay so a lot of social media the games are getting played now okay so that is the sunday sector here then these are the possible Uh, career opportunities that is currently functional okay going forward okay so same uh, genre here here we have designers we have testers we have uh, level i mean uh, level designers developers coders so you have plethora of opportunities that is coming up here okay so this is the brief and uh, i think we have taken substantial time hello yeah sir dinesh Yes. So, any queries, or shall we? Or? We have a query session. This will be. We'll take it up after this session. Okay. And you know, there is a Q and A box available where the students can put in their queries. You can stop the screen sharing. Okay. So, students, uh, you know, you you have multiple options when it comes to careers in design, and uh, you know, choosing it wisely is something which is going to be. the need of the r i will quickly also show you what exactly is it that we have at dayan and sagar university in terms of offering to you do you want to jump start your career in creative design then it's time to enroll in our b design program dayan and sagar university is the number one among bangalore's best universities pace setter in the school of arts design and humanities a legacy of academic excellence spanning 6 decades world class infrastructure and state of art labs experienced faculty on campus placements here is an overview of our b design program full time four year ug program specialization in product design user experience design choice based credit system research based courses and projects workshops and industry visits here is an overview of our courses Begin your amazing journey of innovative design with Dayananda Sagar University.
so let me uh, also mention uh, you know my a uh, sincere gratitude and a thanks to all the speakers to the, to, uh, to the distinguished speakers of for today's session and a big thanks to the brds team for allowing dayan and sagar university to present its capabilities its thoughts and our imagination when it comes to the generation coming forward today to look at the uh, new age design careers uh, while we leave you with the thought process uh, we would also want you to visit our website dsu.edu.in and the applications are open i think most of you today are looking at the examinations that are available for nid or F, uh, you know nifts but also we would want you to think about uh, you know one of the best universities in karnataka today dayan and sagar university we have the admissions help line and if there's anything that you would want to know more please drop into any of our uh, our campuses and we will have the career experts who can spend some time with you to share some expertise on how you can choose your university for your career in design a big thanks to all the speakers for sharing their insights taking out time and uh, uh, spending the evening with us uh, thank you to all the students uh, especially for the ones who are still writing their examinations we wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing you soon at our centers thank you so much thank you so much if there are any questions we can take it up uh there is one question that is available do we apply through uced and do we need portfolios professor arvind sir yeah uh so this is primarily related to the admissions for the dsu uh, school of design so uh you I mean uh, there is separately a dsat test i presume for uh, dsu and uh, you would also be considering the uced as well yes we will also be looking forward to the uced score and uh, of course the student will have to come in for an interview with the dean and they will have to present their portfolios this is a part of the admission process we do accept given the pearson scores we also accept the uced score and this will help the student to come forward uh, the students who do not have uh, any entrance score we then look forward to the in writing our entrance test we have a dsat test especially for the school of design and post the test the student will go in for an interview there's a question from arya do you have mac labs and adobe softwares for students i think the vice chancellor sir can uh, take up this answer if sir is not there yeah i can answer this on his behalf yeah. for the time yes we do have adobe software for students uh there are definitely labs also it's not exclusively uh, apple macintosh labs or something like that but uh, we do have a blended uh, sort of labs which consist of macintosh windows Uh, Linux, Torvald, and uh, several other uh, OSs on which we operate. And uh, on the top of it, uh, you get to get uh, Adobe and uh, any other uh, uh, tools which are required for the software for design available separately. Yeah, there's another question. So when will the entrance when, exam? When will be? the entrance exam? So in fact, it's available on our website. There are going to be multiple exams available. because we have the state board exams which are getting over on the 18th then we have the cbse exams getting over on the 7th so we will be having multiple slots available how many students are going to be in a batch we just look at 40 students in a batch the capacity is 60 but we are limiting it to only 40 seats i think that that answers the query for mr arya Yes, we do have the B Design program starting at DSU. If you have seen the last video which was playing, it also showed the contents that are available for the program. In case if you are interested, just drop in a mail through our website. You can just register to our website, and we'll have a specific brochure related to the B Design program, which can be emailed. Yeah, there's another question.
So there are a few more questions, uh, Shinde. Yeah. You scroll down below. Please. The selection process. Of course, we uh, we have both the capabilities available. We have an online process available. We have an offline process also available. The choice is with the student. They can log in and they can decide if they are coming to our our facility. They could let us know and we will arrange the visit for you. Post which you could also meet some of our faculties and and the dean for the program to interact with. The question is about the, when did this entrance? I mean, when did this B design start? I think that's the question in the DSU. Uh, that's I mean, Professor Muthi has been handing uh, design courses for about. Uh, four or five years uh, since, and probably in DSU it started a couple of years back, I suppose. At DSU. This is the third year at DSU. And uh, we, we, we are limiting the batch only to 40 students. The program, as uh, you know, this year, last year, we had challenges in terms of COVID, but the program did start in August. This year also, we expect the program to go live uh, in by last week of July or by first week of August. The entrance exam is a part and parcel. We have three options available to you. The moment you log into the website, you could select which is the slot, which is the date that you would want to take up. And it will be followed by the process and the eligibility criteria, after which uh, there will be an interview with the dean. And then if everything goes well, we will have the admission letters being awarded to the students who have been selected for the program. Shinde, any idea when the sentence exam is uh, kind of likely to approximate the timeline? So that July is the, uh, July 15th will be the first when we have the examination for B design. By that time, we have even the CBSC uh, examinations, which will be over. So we, we are scheduling one, one test for the B design program after the CBSC exams are going to be over. And we will have the details shared in the website. And there'll probably be a couple of more. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, if anybody misses the July 15th, 